It usually starts out obeying one command first, then another. Okay? It's just like um, God says to one of the biggest issues we have is tithing. Okay? God says tithe, and our flesh is, I cannot afford to. But God says, if you tithe and open up the windows of heaven, I'll give you more than you can handle. Press down, shake it together, overflowing on your lap. And God says, test me, see if I can do that for you. Because I am not a man that I should lie. But we still, oh, <coughs> like the rich young man, we try to negotiate the price of blessings. It doesn't work. So don't even try it once. We need to resolve to live under God commands all of them. Just get started. Okay? Just get started and, and just adjust along the way. Because if you don't start obeying what happens, you get stuck. And you'll never, 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 never get forward. Amen? That's really important. Remember this. This prayer is really important. Jesus, help me to know and to do your will today. It's worth writing down if you have to hear now. Jesus, help me to know and do your will today. And I guarantee you, you do that continually, you'll be transformed and you'll live a better life. Jesus, help me to know and to do your will today. Number three, stopping too soon. Hebrews 4.16 says, And let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Anybody need more mercy and grace? Mm. Uh, my cup is empty sometimes. Lord, I want my cup running over with your grace. I need that confidence, Lord, that you're with me. And sometimes, you know, oh man, it is so, so, so difficult. That we must do. What is, our, what is our alternative anyway? There are many times that I just wanted to quit. <coughs> Me, this Christian stuff was so hard to do it, especially when I was living, you know, when we were living in a van, especially when we didn't have any money, especially when our friends walked away, mm. especially when some of our church friends betrayed us. You know, da 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 da. Oh, we're going to have that. And it was so difficult not to get even. You know, it's somebody, <coughs> my, my nature. Okay, my human nature. If you hurt me, I'm going to get you. Anybody like that? Or just me? Come on, right? You want to flat their tires. You want to put sugar inside the gasoline tank. You know what I mean? You want to put dog food in front of their house. And, yeah, come on. All of us have struggled with that before. Why do we want to get even? God says, you want to get even? Forgive them and move on. Oh, I know I like that one. Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. God is at work in whatever your circumstances are. God is at work. God is good all of the time, and all of the time God is good. Lord, you said you're going to help me. How come? Lord, I can't do it without you. That's right, you cannot do it without God. So why don't you ask for his help? God has helped us through so many of our trials. When Lynn and I look back in our lives, just recently this morning, I was looking back at some of the things that happened in our lives. Then I look around and, you know, I'm looking at our extension now. I said, you know what? Our extension right now, we could put four Volkswagen vans in our extension right now. Isn't that cool? We live in our Volkswagen for a year and a half, and now we could put four in, in our pattern. Cool, yeah, what God could do. Was it instantaneous? No. We had to go through it. You know what our blessings are right now? The blessings that we have not right now is our family. I look at our family all serving the Lord and I'm looking at them, they're being blessed. I'm a happy guy. I don't care how much money that I have or don't have, I look at my family, I am so blessed. <coughs> God, why did you help me? God, how come I'm broke? God, why did you leave me here? And God tells me that I feel stupid. You know what? My fault. Okay? Don't trust in, uh, don't trust in your situation. Okay? Don't look at what you see. All trials we go through will make you stronger. Sound like Kelly Clarkson's song, yeah? 
Yeah. You will see God's working in your life. If you're a Christian, you will see Him working in your life. Okay? You won't remain in those trials. Don't give up in your trials. You will go through trials and get out of trials. You go back into one and get out of them. God says in your life you will have many, many troubles. But don't worry. If you are with me, I have overcome every single problem. You should be praying, not my will, but your will be done, God. God will help you build your faith. Yes, it is important to read His Word. What's equally important is to stay communicated with Him often through your prayer. If you don't know, just say, God, I don't know. God, I need your help. And God is more than willing to do if you come with a humble, humble heart. So what is that little thing, that little thought that's slowing you down and brought you to a sudden stop? What is it? Define it. In this case of the rich man, it was his wealth. It could be anything. We deliberately put first. Or ignorantly put ahead of God. Those little things. Ungodly friendships or relationships. Some of you are in a relationship. God goes, you better not. How about your work? How about recreational sports, gambling, drugs, bad attitude, ministry? Whatever it is, it is. Get rid of it. Move it aside. Put it wherever it belongs and put God first in your life. We need to take the step, a step of being still, having solitude with God, and listening to Him, removing the things that don't matter in our lives, and just being still and say, Lord. I've seen somebody, you know why people don't, and this is Lily and I were discussing this this morning. Why are people stuck? Think about it, why are you stuck? <coughs> You're going through the motions. Okay, here it is. If Satan cannot steal your salvation, he's going to steal your joy. How many of you walk around joyless? You look at your family. Uh, yeah. <coughs> look at your husband and wife. Where's the passion? You look at your job. Going back to the coal mines again. When are you most happiest? <coughs> do you really enjoy your husband and wife? Or you do, do you just tolerate them? Do you really enjoy your children? Or are they a nuisance? Do you really enjoy jo the job God is giving you right now? And being a good steward with the job that you have right now because God is preparing you for a better one? Do you go to your job? Oh, man, I don't want to be here. Stupid people, stupid boss. I need more money. Blah, 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 blah. Are you complaining more than worshiping God? How can God move you out of your present situation if you don't make the best of your situation right now? <coughs> if, you're not, if you're not happy here, you will be happy there. Mm -hmm. Why? Maybe that marriage would be better. Look, they're so happy over there. You don't know what they're going through in heaven. Oh, look at that church. They seem so wonderful. You don't know what they're going through. Oh, look at that job. Oh, no, it doesn't work that way. This is the place God has put you. Choose to rejoice. And, be glad. and let God move you. <coughs> Easy? No. The serpent. Dead end words. Okay? They will change your life. Listen to these words. Have you heard it before? Cancer! How many are scared of that C word? How about divorce? Pink slip? Downsizing? Bankruptcy? You know that when things get out of control and you can't do anything about it, there's someone who's always in control and always can do something about it. And his name is Jesus. When you face dead ends, don't focus on what you cannot do. You focus on what God can do. Thank you, Spirit. <coughs> 
Thank you for your prayers. Here it is. Key scripture. Romans 4.17 says, Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and creates new things out of nothing. Repeat Romans 4.17. Here are two things. Here are two things. God does what you cannot do. He can give life to the dead and he can create something out of nothing. What a great God we have, right? If God can give life to a dead man, he can give life in a dead career. He can give life to a dead marriage and a relationship. He can bring life back to your financial dead ends. He can bring life back into your dead dreams. God can do it because all things are possible with God. It wasn't positive thinking that helped Abraham. Positive thinking works fine in situations you can't control. But positive thinking is not faith. There are two very different things. In situations that are out of your control, positive thinking is worthless. It's just wishful thinking. It doesn't change the situation. When you face things that are out of your control, you need something or someone more than positive, a positive mental attitude. <coughs> you need faith in God. Because He controls everything that you cannot. That's called trust. Most of, most, of life, most of life is beyond our control. So we need faith beyond okay, what we see and what we think. But here's another thought. When we feel that we're at a dead end, maybe it was God who led us there in the first place. <coughs> Happened to us. When I lost everything, lost my career, lost my job, lost this, lost that, and, we're, and we were poor really desperate. God brought me there. Then I remember one night I was carrying my, my son David he was two years old and I was carrying him and we lived on Mokohana Street in Kalama Valley in a five bedroom home on a hill. We could see the golf course, we, we saw Coco Head, was, he could see Sandy's on that side and it was a very moonlit night and God I, I, God spoke to me in my heart he says Nando, what is my relationship with you? Uh-oh. You know when God gets your attention, you get that, you cannot run away. And he told me, I'm going to take away everything that you have. He was true to his word. Why? Because the things that I had, had me. And I thank God that he took everything away. Now I have everything that he wants me to have. I surrendered all. Was it easy? No. Did we have to budget? Did have to we had to change? Because of those little foxes in our eyes, beware. Those manini things will and can hurt us if we don't if we ignore them, if we deny them, or we tolerate them. Get rid of them sooner or later, or they will get rid of you sooner or later. I'm going to close with these two scriptures and I want you just to be still and you think about those little thoughts. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. First of all, submit to God. If you do not submit to God, you submit to yourselves. You submit to the devil. When you submit to God first, then you can resist the devil. Why? Because you're in total submission to God. And when God shows up, the devil runs away because he knows that he is defeated. One last scripture. Think about this. Hebrews 12, 1. Let us run the race that is laid out in front of us. Let's throw off any extra baggage and get rid of the sin that trips us up. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, speak to us as we are still. Point, us, point to us those little things. That one thing, the little foxes that's affecting our life, affecting our marriages, our finances. 
our relationship with you. We thank you, Lord. Speak to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray that it runs deep into the hearts of your people. Get rid of those little foxes because we have a big heart. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay, let's stand. Let's close it with this song. Jehovah Jireh will fill all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen.